Good morning, everybody. It's Norma here. How are you? Welcome to your Wednesday morning slow flow. We're going to get started in a few minutes. So uh, happy for those who are able to join live and for those who join later. I hope that you uh, enjoy the class as well. So just a couple reminders. Uh, as always, I can't see you out there. So this is an all levels class. Um, remember to honor yourself and your body and um, do what feels good for you today. What I'm providing is an offering and we're gonna provide some modifications or alterations uh, for anybody that uh, maybe wants to go a little deeper into the pose or maybe take it down if you're feeling that uh, that feels better for you today. So we're gonna start in Shavasana today. Uh, so bring anything that you want with you to your mat. I do have some blocks with me today. Um, you may not have blocks, but maybe you have a, a, a steady pillow or something that you may want to have handy if you uh, want a prop for some balancing posture. We're just going to do one balancing posture later. Um, and um, Or if you want a pillow for your Shavasana. So we're going to get uh, started. And remember just that, that sips of water are good for your class. Resting. I take my own practice having a sip of water. Taking a rest. Going to your home base of uh, down dog or child's pose whenever that feels good to you. So I'm gonna just sit in a seat for a few minutes and then join you <clears throat> at the start of class on my back. And welcome Ginger to our practice. I hope you don't find her too distracting. So it is 7.30, so we're gonna get started. So finding your way down to your Shavasana pose to start our corpse pose and taking up as much room on your mat as feels good. Letting your toes fall out to the side, maybe tucking your shoulders under and just checking, making sure that you're not extending your neck, I'm just making sure that you know your your chin is your chin is tucked and we're not causing any stress on our neck. So let's arrive. Taking these first few breaths as you land here, letting go of anything that you may have brought with you to your mat, letting go of anything that you may be thinking about that may be through your day. Can you arrive here and be for the next 45 minutes? this time that you've carved out for yourself on this Wednesday morning. Can you allow the breath to let you settle here? Feeling that support that your mat is giving you. Feeling the support that my voice may bring to you. And then even imagining in your mind's eye the support that this community is providing. Even though we aren't together in the same space, we are together, grounded here. Let's take an inhale breath together. Sigh, let it all go. And with those cleansing breaths, make as much noise if you want to. Remember, with each breath, it's a fresh start. And whenever you feel things may be building up, I invite that. Inhale through your nose and exhale. See how that lets you soften even more. I wanted to talk about planting seeds this morning. So you may have noticed some um, signs of spring starting where you are. Snow is 
birds melting. The birds are coming back. Maybe you can see grass on your on your lawn for the first time. And with that brings new hope. So I know for a lot of us we feel that we've been in this roller coaster ride of the last year with the pandemic. And with spring coming upon us once again. May that bring some hope that we are seeing the light of this time, end of this tunnel. So as we practice and flow and breathe here, maybe think of what seeds you want to sow this spring. So that may be things that you want to plant in your garden, Maybe things that you want to plant in your life. What are you looking forward to? What would you like to sow as we enter into this next phase? And even think about maybe what the new normal may look for you and what seeds you want to have planted there to sprout. Bring your awareness back to your body, inviting small movements as we circle out wrists and ankles, inviting your right ear to your right shoulder, breathing back to center and over to the left shoulder, left ear, left shoulder, linking your breath with movement, movement with breath. No rush in the world as we're going through these postures. Back to center. One more time. Right ear, right shoulder. And as we're doing this, can you scan your body and back to center? And over to the left. Last time. Left ear, left elbow, left shoulder. How is your body feeling this? Wednesday morning. And what does my body need from this practice? Back to center, sending breath into any area that may be calling. As always, just awareness, no judgment. You take your arms overhead and stretch like you're waking up from a long nap. And maybe that's another thing we can think of is this long nap that we've been kind of held in for this last year. Isn't that awesome to start waking up from that? Bringing your knees to chest, grabbing onto your knees or underneath your knees, bringing head and shoulder up. Maybe grabbing on and hugging your knees to chest like you just greeted yourself or someone at the airport. Lovely, when we're able to go on airplanes again. Letting head and shoulders come down. And you take your feet up to the ceiling. Big, generous bend to your knees and reach through to whatever is accessible to you. So that may be your pant legs or maybe your toes are accessible. Big, generous bend to your knees. And let's just rock from side to side here in our happy baby pose. Giving a little bit of massage to our lower back. Sending breath into any area that may be calling for it. Big, big, big generous bend to your knees. We're just warming up. And 
spine, can you take your left knee, bend it in, slowly extend the right knee, still bending deeply into that right knee, don't overextend, and back to center, getting the right knee bent now, maybe straightening out the left knee a wee bit, and coming back to center. Couple more rock removals from side to side. Bring your knees into chest one more time and rolling over to one side with the other, whichever is calling you, as we push ourselves up into our tabletop position. Setting our foundation for our tabletop position. Fingers are splayed out right. Shoulders are stacked on top of elbows, on top of wrists. Good alignment allows us to not create any pain going forward. So dropping our belly, lifting our gaze, extending our, leg, our tail long behind us. Let's flow through some cat cows to warm up our spine. Exhaling, belly button to spine, curling in like that scary Halloween cat. And inhaling, cow. Exhaling, belly button to spine. And adding any authentic movement that your body may be craving here. I often want to roll out my shoulders and neck here a little bit in the cat. One more time with your own breath. Feeling that connection to the earth, the ground, through your palms or your hands, the top to the tip of your toes, and coming back to a neutral spine. Oh, let's just wag our tail out a little bit. Is that? Can you breathe your right hand up, feeding that right hand through the eye opening of your left arm, can you bend your left elbow and let your forehead or your side of your head come down to the floor, thread the needle with your arm here, inviting your ear to the mat, making sure if this is causing any issues with your neck that you're coming out of that posture a wee bit. Feeling that nice stretch opening in your shoulder. Beautiful guys. Letting yourself come back up. Tabletop, wagging your tail. Try side to side once again to reset. Let's do that second side. Breathing left arm up this time. Feeding that left arm through the opening of your right arm. Letting your elbow bend so you can come down. Inviting your side of your head and your ear to the floor, beautiful guys, allowing yourself to come back, unraveling, once again wagging your tail from side to side, as we take our hands forward, tucking our toes, Bending generously into our knees as we lift our hips up and back to our first downward facing dog. So what feels good here in this first inversion, maybe it's that coming in to yourself. Maybe you want to pedal at your feet a little bit. Let's do that. Let's bend generously into our right knee, letting our left heel come down to the mat. Kind of like what we're doing in our happy baby. And switching, left knee is bent, inviting that right heel to the floor. Feeling that nice stretch in the back of the right leg. So as we're talking about sowing seeds, 
that we focus on our root chakra back to center, settling out your damn dog. So our root chakra, Maladhara, is bright red. And as we're going through these postures this morning, maybe feeling that connection to earth and your mat. As we activate that root chakra, as we plant our seeds for the spring. Bend your knees, look into the top of the mat, and travel there. You can tippy toe, you can take a big step, or if it's in your practice, you can jump there. Inhale to lengthen, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Let's bend generously again into our knees once again. Taking our feet, shoulder distance apart, you can heel toe out. Again, big generous bend to your knees as we grab opposite elbows for our rag doll here. And let's just take this opportunity to feel that connection to earth. Allowing our neck to hang here. Nodding your head, yes. Shaking your head, no. Maybe even inviting a smile to the corners of your mouth. Relaxing anything that you may still be holding on to in your neck and shoulders. your hands come down, taking our feet back into hip distance, heel toeing. Just inhale to lengthen and exhale, folding in. Inhale to rise. Exhale, bring that all the way into your heart. Do this again, inhaling and bringing that into your heart. One more time, inhaling this time sitting back into your chair. Feeling that root, connection to your mat with your feet, tucking our tail, making sure we're still breathing here. And exhale, let it all go. Inhale, flat back to lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to our first vinyasa. So be kind to your body. Where are you at this morning? I'm going to lower to my knees for our first Chaturanga Dandasana, our Yogi push-up. So elbows are hanging tightly by our sides, lowering ourselves all the way down. Inhaling to lengthen. Little baby cobra to warm up. Tucking your toes, pushing up through table or all the way through to your downward facing dog. Three breaths here to reset. Maybe even inviting a cleansing breath in through your nose and sigh, let it all go. Can you take your right leg up behind you? Looking forward, can you take your right foot to the top of your mat or help it there. I wanted to share that it probably took me six months of yoga before I could step my foot to the top of the mat. So always an invitation to honor your body and do whatever works. Helping your leg there because with time and practice you will see improvement. Letting our left foot come up on a 45 and take yourself up into warrior one. I'm going to squiggle my foot out a little bit here as I felt that my knee was too forward over my toe. So proper alignment first. Hips are forward like headlights. That heel of the left foot is on the mat. You're bending generously into your right knee. And it's a scissoring action of your legs to keep your balance. And if this is too intense with your hands up, you can bring hands to heart center. Sometimes I feel a little bit more grounded if my hands are in heart center. Wherever your hands are, letting them come down to the mat. 
stepping right foot to meet that, and it's running out with a shavasana, or vinyasa. So higher low plank, all the way down, shining your heart forward, and you're reaching up through downward facing dog. Only a few vinyasas this morning, but always nice to have a few flows in there to warm up our bodies. Hello, Ginger. So you know we're going now, breathing left foot up long behind you, bending your knee, looking forward or stepping in a hop or helping your left leg to the top of the mat. Right foot comes on at 45, rising up, warrior one, second side. So I'm going to stabilize myself here first, hips are forward, hands to heart center. I'm breathing your hands up and your gaze can follow. Letting your hands come down, left foot meets right, rinse it out with your vinyasa. Maybe your heart's turning a little bit more fully here as we're warming up, not overextending, pushing up to downward facing dog. Bending your knees, looking to the top of the mat and traveling there. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, sit back in your chair. Nice guys job. Nice job, guys. <laughs> Siri Namaskar B. Warm up this morning. Can we inhale our arms up and exhale swan dive? Let it all go. Inhale, flat back to lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, step back. Knock one more in there, guys. Beautiful. Five breaths to reset. You're going to take your right leg up behind you, bending your knee, stacking your hips, opening up that hip a wee bit. And inviting movement into your hip with circles to your knee. Breathe one way and then three the other. Beautiful. When that's complete, looking forward, back in your three legged dog, can you bend your knee and step to the top of your mat? Once again, pivoting on that back foot, so you're opening up that 45, rising up into our warrior one. Taking our hands behind, clasping our fingers, taking our hands long down behind our spine, opening up our chest. If this is too much, you can grab opposite elbows or you can just let your hands um, hang by your side. So inhaling to lengthen, exhaling, bowing over your right knee, inviting your right shoulder to your right knee, making sure tail is tucked, humbling our warrior. I'm going to let my hands come down a little bit. If you're feeling a tall breathless, please let go of the clasp. It may feel too intense for your shoulders. Can you soften here? Bowing in.
strength and humility, these warrior poses help us to feel rooted and grounded. Letting your hands come down if you're you were clasped, inching our fingers forward as we lengthen out our left leg, letting that leg drag along behind you until it comes off the mat. If you have a block handy, you maybe want to come up on a block for your expression of your warrior three. If you want to challenge your balance here, maybe coming and letting your fingers come up onto your tippy toe. So our left foot is flexed, feeling like we're standing on that wall behind you. And maybe if you want to challenge yourself here a little bit, making sure you're still bending into that standing leg. Maybe hands come to heart center, even if it's just for a sec. Or maybe you want to fly this morning. Remember to honor yourself. I'm coming down this morning. Letting left foot come to meet right. And just shake your hips from side to side. Nice job, guys. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhale, folding in. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, swan dive all the way down. Can you step your right leg long behind you? Pipping on that right foot, rising up. Guitar Warrior One. Know where we're going now. So taking our hands behind us, switching the clasp of your arms this time if your hands were clasped, inhaling to lengthen our arms long behind us, not losing that bend into your left knee. Can you bow yourself forward, inviting left shoulder to left knee, making sure tail is tucked. Letting left hands come down, letting our fingers crawl forward as that right leg long drags long behind us so it reaches up. Imagine you're standing on that back wall with the right foot here. And we're is your expression of warrior three on the second side? Always awareness that one side is completely different than the other on in your body. But challenge yourself at the same time. And maybe your challenge is coming up in your tippy toe fingers this morning. Right hands come down if your hands are up, taking right foot to meet left. And let's take our feet shoulder distance apart and our toes are facing out. Let's just seesaw ourselves from side to side as we come down and find ourselves into a Malasana squat. So if this is a little challenging, you can always bite a pillar or block underneath your seat. Tail is tucked. We want to lengthen our spine. Can you settle here for five more breaths? Really grounding. Beautiful guys. Letting your hands come down, letting your hips come up, heel toeing your feet in, maybe wagging your tail from side to side. Nice soft job. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhale, folding in, planting your hands, stepping back to our final vinyasa. 
maybe upward dogs in your practice if you want to go there. Meeting down in our down dog and then finding our way into our child's pose. Nice job, guys. So taking the next 10 or 15 breaths to recharge and reset. few different postures than we've done for a bit. Then we take an inhale together and exhale, sigh a little, go. When you're ready, can we find ourselves stretching long, our legs behind us, they are on our bellies. Our locust pose, just settling into Sphinx pose here just for a moment. So our hands are bent at the, our arms are bent at the elbow, our shoulders, our elbows are underneath our elbows. Tail is long behind us, toes are pointed. If this is too intense, you can come down out of this. We don't want you to hurt your back. Our, actually, I'm going to switch gears. Letting yourself come all the way down, forehead to mat, taking your hands underneath your elbow. Stretching your right hand long to the side, taking our left fingers, tenting them, pushing ourselves up like we're reaching up into a cobra pose. Can you bend your left knee? and take your left foot and find the floor behind you as we come into extended wing posture. So you can travel your fingers up if you want to get deeper into your shoulder. On that right side. Holding no tension here in our extended wing posture. Getting a little deeper into our shoulders and our hips a bit today. Letting yourself come back to center. Letting your hands come back underneath your shoulders. Letting forehead come to the mat. Can you take your right ear to the mat? And coming back to center. This time, the left arm is long to the side. Coming up on our right, tented fingers. 
bending our right knee as we inhale, coming up, letting that right foot come over to the left side of your mat. And once again, letting your fingers come up, if you want to get deeper into that shoulder, and then letting your right hand come down, your shoulder relax on the right side here. Bring yourself in into this posture now for five breaths. Yourself unwind. Bring your shoulder, forehead come down first, and then bring the left ear to the mat. Job guys, lay it before it come down back to the mat. Taking a breath here to get that connection to Mom Earth once more time. Maybe imagining your root chakra, that maladhara, that bright red color. Before pushing yourself up. And we're going to find our way onto our seat. And from our seat, lowering ourselves all the way down onto our backs. You can take your hands out to the side, letting your feet Point out to the sides of your mat, let your knees come in. And can we invite some windshield wipers to our legs here? Getting that little massage to our back. The next time your knees fall to the right, you can leave them there, taking your left arm long, right arm could be on your belly, and if you want to get deeper into the stretch, you could hook your right foot onto your left knee, and your gaze can be over your left shoulder, or your eyes can be lowered if that feels okay. Using your breath, letting your knees come up. Left foot is on the floor. We're in our figure four position. So if this feels okay for you, you can stay here. Or if you want to get deeper, maybe you want to put your tippy toes up here, or maybe even putting your foot on a block. If it's in your practice to thread the needle, you can go there, making sure that your feet are flexed to protect your knees and you're not compromising your breath going here. You're not scrunching up your shoulders. Letting 
plus with your legs go, letting your left foot come down to the ground, letting your right foot come to meet left, once again, letting our toes come out wide, bringing our knees in just to start, and then initiate your windshield wipers from side to side. Maybe just take this moment as we're winding down to see how you're feeling now. Is there any area that maybe calling out for some extra tension? You can send the breath there. The next time your knees fall to the left, we can leave them there. Stretching our right arm long to the side. Left arm can come on belly, hand on belly. You can hook your left heel over right knee. Get a little deeper here. And gaze can be over your right shoulder now or your eyes can be closed if that feels okay. So just like in our standing series, one side can be completely different than the other. back to center as you breathe in, setting up for figure four, thread the needle on the second side. So figure four here, wrap on your tippy toes, or if you want to, thread the needle, reaching through that window of your <clears throat> right leg, clasping onto right leg, and feeling that stretch in the left side of your hip. Feet are flexed, protect your knees. Letting that go when you're ready. Letting your left foot come down to the floor. And just a few more windshield wipers just to reset your spine. Before letting your knees settle, bringing feet into hip distance apart, taking our hands down to the mat to give us some support as we breathe our legs up. Maybe just let your feet hang here for a moment and our legs up the wall. You could take your hands more towards your hips if your back is having any issues. Let's just maybe put our feet a few times. And shaking our legs off. Just allowing them to hang here. And anything that might have cooled in your extremities to be rinsed out. before bringing knees back into chest and settling into your Shavasana, giving your body any movement that it may be craving on the way there, before settling into this final rest, knowing that when the time is right, the sound of my voice will bring you back.
with your body now. Noticing your breath. Is there any bridges there? Slowly inviting small movements to your body as you slowly wake back up. Touching your ankles or your wrists. Inviting right ear to right shoulder. And back to center. And left ear to left shoulder. How are you feeling now? Stretching your arms overhead. Toes long. Or bringing yourself up, maybe giving yourself a little hug before rolling over to one side or the other. And let's just stay here in fetal position just for a breath or two. Not wanting to rush anything this morning. Again, that grounding, that connection to our root chakra, our maladhara. as we're in this fetal position. When you're ready, pushing yourself up, finding yourself in a seat, bringing hands to heart center, chin is humble, gaze can be lowered or eyes can be closed if that feels okay. So taking this Last few breaths or two. Noticing any change in your body, your heart, or your mind that your practice has brought to you. Thanking yourself for carving out this time to gather and move and breathe. And maybe thinking about what spring may bring. And know that you yourself are your own best teacher. Make some room to plant the seeds for spring. It's been my honor to guide you in your practice this morning. Know that the love and the light in my heart bows too the love and the light in your hearts. Namaste. A beautiful day. Hi. <laughs> My words. Have a beautiful day, everyone. And I will see you next Wednesday on your mat.